Yeah, thank you guys for, for staying. I appreciate that. We uh, obviously talked a little bit in the locker room, um, but I appreciate you guys sticking around. I know there's a, a big game on tonight, so. Um, but no, just obviously, you know, we, we didn't, couldn't really get in any rhythm offensively. I, I was really happy with our defense in the, in the first half. I mean, to hold them to 15 and 12, um, really even in the third to 17. I, I thought that this team, I thought Maryland was really, we had an opportunity to, to get them tonight um, and just, you know, couldn't get over that hump. Had it tied, I think, at one point. Um, it was tied three times uh, and just couldn't, couldn't get the stops or the scores and just really struggled um, shooting. Obviously, 31% from the field and only 23% from the, from the three-point line. Um, you know, it's just it's, it's not, not what we wanted, but uh, we, we got to continue to get better at that. We, we got out-rebounded, um, and I just thought it was plays in the fourth where it was consecutive rebounds, and, and we got to be better. We, we got to fight harder. We got to be more disciplined in those moments um, and just with, with, greater, with greater fight and, and competitiveness in order to win these games. Just for either one of the players, like Coach was mentioning, just what kind of had you out of your rhythm offensively? What you, what led to that, I guess? Um, you know, sometimes shots just not going to fall. I feel like we was getting pretty good looks. Got a lot of layups, close to the basket, open shots. Just wasn't falling. And I feel like when that happened, like, we got to be that more intentional, trying to get to the free throw line and trying to manufacture points there. For Camille, the two games against Maryland have been some of your best games this season. What's maybe this match has maybe favored you, or what have you maybe seen in this game to have uh, those two good games against them? Um, I'm not really too concerned about you know how I'm doing. I'm worried about the team. Play to win every single time. Like that's that's bottom line. You have to play to win. So that's that. It's for both of you. It was a very physical game today, and. To go on Thursday where seemingly everything was being called to go today where there might have been a few missed calls. How much of a challenge is that as a player on the court? Well, you just got to be that much more stronger and kind of go off, going off of two feet and like not expecting the contact or not expecting the call, like just going and finishing. For both of you guys, like you said, Genesis, um, you're taking clean looks and they just don't fall. What's that feeling of frustration that you might get? Can you guys elaborate on how you feel after you're taking those really good shots and they just don't go in the basket? I mean, we practice our shots so many times, uh, so it definitely is a frustrating frustration feeling. But I mean, you just got to move on. This basketball, it's hard to get the ball in the basket. You know, you got to move on. Just does it – feel like you're what's kind of the next step for this team of kind of figuring it out in the next five games because obviously they're big games for you you know a chance to move up in the standings what do you kind of look at this next this finishing stretch as an opportunity for your team just like you said an opportunity and I feel like tomorrow we're off so everyone just take a day and do whatever you got to do and now is really time to just finish strong because everybody talk about it's not how you start but it's how you finish so we got some big opportunities coming up on the road back at home so we not giving up. We haven't checked out. We we ready to fight. We ready to come back. Camille, for your, I mean, just this, what you've been able to do, you know, the, getting more comfortable, you know, feeling like you, you know, from transferring in. What, what's that process been kind of like for you? And what's the second half of the season? You know, do you feel like you're finding finding your comfort zone, your role of what the expectations are with this team? Um. I think that, like I've said before, like I'm not really too <laughs> focused on myself. I'm playing to win with my teammates, and that's that's the biggest thing is winning. And you know, right now we, well tonight, you know, we didn't get that done. So obviously, there's a, uh, more opportunity, like Jen said, that for us to get better and and take a step forward. So you know, it's opportunity. For both of you, what does the play for K game mean to you, just both individually? Um. It's, it's special, it's really important. There's a lot of uh, people who are affected by breast cancer and you know cancer in general. So to have an opportunity where it's de uh, totally dedicated to that, it's special and it means a lot to so many people. Yeah, I would say um, yeah, it means a lot because you're playing for a big cause and cancer is it's a tough thing and a lot of people are affected by it. So 
just praying for the survivors and even the fighters and yeah, so it's a big thing. Just playing off the question I was asking Camille just about these two matchups against Maryland maybe being her best two games. What do you feel like, is there something about this matchup that's maybe favored her or what have you maybe seen from her in those two games? Yeah, it's interesting because how they play, they make it really tough to get entries in there. So it's, it's you know, kind of uh, impressive that she's had 18 and 16 against them because they do a really good job. They're not that big, but they front and – um, they really try to pack it in. Um, so she made some really big plays and some really hard finishes and, and catches and finishes. Um, but, you know, we know because of their fronts and because of their three-quarter, you know, abling to get rolling seals and positioning and drive them up the lane so we can get some of those passes over top. Um, I thought she does a really good job with that and utilizing her body um, to get those seals. Um, and, and she could have had more. We had some bad passes to her, too. Otherwise, she probably could have scored more. Um, so just taking advantage of how they play the, the post inside. There were maybe two plays under the ba inbound plays under the basket where you guys couldn't get the ball in or turn the ball over. What was behind that, and what do you need to fix from those inbound plays? We got to throw it further over. I mean, we ran three different plays and had three turnovers, and that can't happen. It's absolutely unacceptable. Um, we have to get – you need to throw that over top. You cannot throw that pass short. Um, and we'll look at it as a staff as well. It cannot happen. And that was a huge point in the game. I think it was maybe a one-point game. You can't, you can't turn the ball over on baseline out of bounds. You've got to get the ball in. And I was extremely frustrated um, and not happy at all about that. It cannot happen. Sorry. Coach, there are a few times where the women struggled to get back on defense and Maryland ended up getting to the rim pretty quickly to score. Why do you feel like that might have been a challenge to get back on defense or slow things down? I, I wish I knew. That's a, you're right, you're right. It's made baskets and we get beat back. It just, it's another one I'm gonna say, it cannot happen. And, and we got to sprint back. You got to understand that, that Briggs was, was running out on that. And we would count, we would score, but then they come right back on a, on a counter and make a layup and those are just deflating. You're trying to get in the game or we're in the game. And it was when it was a tight game. Um, so that is, you know, that's our defense transition on, you know, we talk about misses. And, and that's where you, you got to turn and you got to sprint. And that's effort. Um, and it's, it's discipline to do that. Just kind of piggybacking off of that. I mean, the game seemed like for the most part it was, you know, two, three, four, you know, five point game that, mm -hmm. you know, is that maybe the difference? Do you feel like they just, you know, you couldn't get that one or two key stops that you needed and maybe they got something out in transition? Yeah. What did you kind of see from I, that? I, I do think that, you know, we were right there again, right there. And you just, you got to dig in and you got to get stops. And, and when you have those, I mean, they have, if they're going to score, it has to be like an earned score. And, and that's where I say those type of scores and those type of baskets after you, I can one thing in defense tran, D trans on a on a miss it's a a hell of a lot harder to get back but on a made basket there's just there's no excuses with that and and we got to get back um, but those key key swings right there and this could have been a different game even again not not playing well offensively. We still had opportunities, and we just – I just – it's very disappointing, and I told our team this because I really thought that this was – I thought that Maryland and, and how they were shooting, it was an opportunity that we could have we could have gotten them, and, and we just came up short on a lot of uh, areas. Eighth and ninth, it's looking like a real possibility you guys could see each other in the tournament again. How much – or what can you take away from this game in a possible rematch in the Big Ten tourney? I mean, there's a lot to learn, you know, and that'll be after I break it down and watch film on it, just like we did the first game. Um, you know, the press was not effect it didn't affect us at all. Actually, kind of, you know, if they pressed us harder last game and we got more baskets on the back end. They they really just wanted to make it a half court game, and with their length and their three two, they really clog up the the top half of the court, and we couldn't get under that until like the under the the free throw line lane extended we we needed to get the ball down there more and we didn't um and that's again just their size they're they're 
they're small in terms of post players, but they're so long across the board. And uh, it, we felt it tonight, probably even more so than that first game. I mean, obviously, McIver's up at the top of every scouting report. You know they're going to concentrate on her. What did you maybe see from her today? And was it maybe just the length that you referred to or what maybe made the difference for her not getting yeah. her rhythm? They, they, they really did a great job of really packing in. I mean, that, that free throw line and that paint, it was like a wall. I mean, they had that thing secured. And anything that we tried to get in there off initial action, they were doing a good job. And then when Jen is out, uh, with foul just against his own team, it really hurts us. And that's where, you know, I put her back in and, and you know, that's a risk, but I'm like, it, it she, that hurt us. Um, it's an excuse. We got to figure it out. Um, so, but it's, it didn't, it didn't help us any having Jen on the bench for that long against a team that really packs it in and you got to have some players that can spread it. So, uh, it, you know, and then it just, it, it, KB hasn't practiced in, in two days. She's been sick. Um, and you could tell she wasn't, you know, I, God love her. She tried. She played her, her butt off. Um, but it's it's hard when you've been sick too So um, and, and haven't been up and down. Uh, so those are, you know, there's just a lot of different factors. And then Jen and foul trouble. Again, it's basketball is part of the game. We got to we gotta learn how to, to, to get through those, even with a lot of, you know, adversity thrown your way. Coach, going into Penn State, they're coming off a three-game losing streak. What can you maybe anticipate for that game on Thursday? They're really good. I've said that all year. Uh, I think they're kind of – they were like us last year, you know, kind of that team that, that surprised everyone. They, they've they dealt with a couple injuries too as of late. That's kind of – I think they're getting used to playing um, together. Uh, and, and, you know, they've had a tough stretch in terms of who they're playing as well. But – we got to be able to handle pressure because they're coming at you for, for 40 minutes with full court pressure, um, super aggressive uh, in, in, the, in the half court with switching and, and zone. And, and they're switching it up all the time of what they're throwing at you. Um, and they have some elite scores. The difference between last year and this year, they got some elite scores this year, um, along with McKenna, who's been there. So uh, it's going to be really tough. And I think they've only lost like once or twice at home, too. So, um, But you know what? We've been actually playing. Take the Purdue game out. We've actually probably been playing better on the road this year than we have at home. So uh, I, I'm going to take that positive nugget and, and let that fuel me going into this two-day prep. Just what Maryland's able to do with their guards and rebounding, you know, what? how much of a difference maker was that for them tonight to be able to get on the boards like they were able to? You're right, Joe, because – I felt like we it, it was a lot of their guards. They were flying in and we weren't getting some of those box outs and and they were the ones coming up with it. You know, you have Sellers get 11 rebounds. Jakia had uh 10 and then Bree had 7. I mean, that's it's it's hard and and they're flying in. We didn't do a good job of being fundamental um in our box outs and then again their size. Their size is just you know, now I know coming into this league, I know why Brenda, I think she, she doesn't ever recruit anyone 5'11 or, or under. Um, and you can see with their teams and why they, they've had sustained success. That size, uh, it, it matters. Did Penn State lose today? Wow. Sorry, guys, I just saw that. Thanks for the update. That's what you meant on your oh, – they're really going to want to kick her ass in, aren't they? <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Hobby getting wow. her first double double of her career. I know she's come a couple of rebounds short a couple of times this season, but I guess how how do you think she can kind of build on today's performance after finally getting over that hump? Yeah, I mean she she played you know she did a lot of really good things today, and and you know you're used to Kendall still got eight. You're used to her getting you know ten plus, but. It's a uh, hobby's been really big for us lately, you know, and, and she's doing a great job of continuing to get better. Um, but yeah, if she can continue to get double doubles and now we get KB back to feeling, you know, hundred percent and, and she does doing her thing that helps us out a lot, especially on these nights where the, the ball's not going in her being able to rebound. She, she manufactured some points for us with those, with those rebounds. Everybody good? Great. Thank you guys. I do appreciate you. Thank you.